Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval. Get out of the big city and experience a construction zone free test drive. There is such a thing. Episode two, season two of the Standing By podcast with Terry and Ted. A number of issues to cover on the panel today, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> what is this, the McLaughlin Group? <laughs> I just wanted to see how you'd react. <laughs> the McLaughlin Group. Wow. Remember Stick it? with me for more 30-year-old popular culture references. <laughs> Christ almighty, the McLaughlin Group. Well, we're, we're going to talk about this. About the McLaughlin Group? No, we're not 30 anymore. No, well, hey, that's for sure, yeah. This is, uh, this is one of the things. I'm Terry DeMonte, and that's Ted Bird, and we are excited to say thank you to our title sponsor once again for Season 2. Jaguar Land Rover Laval, uh, a family-owned auto dealership, Nino and Renato Di Cubelis are the proprietors. We've known them for, uh, I guess, about a quarter of a century or so. And the thing about Nino and Renato is uh, they're Nino and Renato. Yes. And anybody who knows Nino and Renato will tell you that's Nino and that's Renato. And they can be of uh, huge help. Well, you know what? Here's what uh, here's what's important to know about Nino and Renato and Jaguar Land Rover Laval. You can uh, you can get a, a nice luxury car in any number of dealerships. There are a lot of nice luxury car yes, dealerships out there. Customer service is what makes the difference, and these guys know how to do it. And in fact, they have a system in place for their staff. It's a customer centric system where they go. They are trained step by step. Here's how you take care of the customer. First, you do this, then you do that, and then you do that. And you don't do that until you do this. You cannot go from here to there without going there first. It's all all about taking care of the customer and making sure the customer has the ultimate satisfactory experience and that starts at the top with nino and renato and they're just the nicest guys and you know it from the second you walk in yeah right right as soon as you get to reception they're just the nicest guys and if you go there and you ask is nino or renato here if they're there they'll come out and say hi to you Mm -hmm. unless they are otherwise tied down in an important meeting they'll be glad to come out and shake your hand or do whatever it is they do in these COVID times, and say hello. JaguarLaval.ca, LandRoverLaval.ca. I mean, the product speaks for itself. It's the customer service that makes the difference. Today on the episode, um, we're going to cover a number of topics that Ted and I thought would be some fun. And uh, because uh, I haven't had a coffee today, I can't remember what it was. Well, here's one. (laughs) We're recording this uh, the day after the Super Bowl. Mm Mm-hmm. And Terry and I were sitting in his hotel room last night watching the Super Bowl, and they were showing the coaches uh, prowling up and down the sidelines. And I said, Jesus Christ, the coaches are younger than we are. (laughs) The NFL coaches are not only are they younger than we are, they're 20 years younger than we are or more. And we were saying it's a bit of a it's a bit of a marker of time. Absolutely. If you remember, I I remember specifically. I, I don't remember the team, but I remember one year thinking. Oh, geez, Christ, I'm older than the, some of the Habs now. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when you're a kid, the Habs are all giants. Right? Oh, yeah, well, they're, they're old like, men. They're old men. Yeah. And then suddenly it was like, wow, I, I'm four years older than that defenseman. Yeah. And then there comes a time where you think, oh, I'm a few years older than the coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there comes a time when yeah. you think, I have got to find a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's the time where you go, <laughs> you remember the McLaughlin report? <laughs> it's, uh, do you remember a specific for that, Ted? What, the first time marker that I remember yeah. is when, when I was older than Playboy Playmates. Oh, okay. Because All when right. you were a teenager, yeah. if you found your dad's Playboy magazine at the yeah. bottom of the underwear drawer, yes, sir. that's where he hides it, by the way. That's where he hides <laughs> it. Like anyone buys a Playboy magazine anymore. And the and the you know these these beautiful women, but mm-hmm. they were grown up women, and you were thirteen years old. So mm-hmm. the first time I looked at a Playboy magazine and thought, "Cripes, I'm older than that centerfold." Yeah. That was a marker of time. The pro athlete thing was the second marker of time, yeah. and then I think that there was a period where there was no marker of time, and then uh, it just occurred to me when we were watching the Super Bowl well, the last other day. night. Yeah. I wonder if this is 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 it just us, Poseidon? Do you have any? You you relating in any way, shape, or form to what we're talking about? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> that sounded like a no. Yep, that's a no. <laughs> well, you know what? That says that he's comfortable in his skin because he's not comparing himself that's to true. anybody else. That's true. You know, the only thing I thought the first time that I uh, realized that I was older than professional athletes, I just thought, well, you know what? That means uh, I'm not going to make the show. That's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. not you're, that there was ever any chance in the first yeah, place. You're, you're not going to get drafted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, nobody, nobody hit Playboy magazines in my house because um, I, I grew up in a single mother, a single mother household. Yes, sir. But I remember, like, at depth sometimes, like, I, I try to, like, you know, grab like yeah. a magazine or whatever. Just have a quick look, sneak yeah. peek. Or, or yeah. like my father, my father loved to hide his porn at the end of uh, of movie tapings, so he would record at the end of movie tapings. He would record a porn uh, at the end. <laughs> so that's where he liked to hide them. And one that, time I found out the hard way at 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. That uh, that makes for a nice family surprise. Yeah, yeah no kidding, eh? <laughs> and of course, none of this is relevant anymore because no. of the internet. If the internet I, existed when yeah. I was a teenager, I yeah. wouldn't be here today yeah. because I would have masturbated myself to death. Well, that's that's what happened to me, you know? That's the, part of the reason why I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> What did your mom used to say? You grow hair in your hands if you do well, that. Well, it was a, it was a Catholic church thing. You know, you'll go blind. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You blind, yeah. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you expect? Well, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. You, you expect kids are not going to. Yeah. Kids, never mind kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how, this is getting uncomfortable. How what do we get on that? that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that our moms are enjoying this conversation. <laughs> my we mother's were, my mother's going. He had Playboy? <laughs> we were uh, talking uh, about uh, my uh, trip from Ottawa yesterday to... Uh, I, I should talk about my parents first of all. My, my, my mother and father celebrated, get a load of this, 65 years married. Their 65th wedding anniversary... I listen. I know other people have been married a long time, but that these days that's pretty much unheard well, of. Well, any at any time that's yeah. pretty much unheard yeah. of. Yeah, it really is a remarkable. I think a remarkable thing, and uh, my, and they still love each other like strawberry oh boy, jam. They follow each yeah. other around. If I could play you the video of them dancing on this past Saturday night. Not bad. My brother put on... Um, You've got to get your hands on that because we want to do a new segment on the show called The Crying Game okay, well, where we play a video and you have to not cry. Well, we'll make it part of the season because there you go. My, the, my brother put on the Nat King Cole version of the song my parents' first dance was back in 1957 at St. Willibrod's Church in Verdun uh, in Montreal. And uh, and at 86 years young, they hung on to each other and danced. Well, I don't even have to see the video. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> really quite something. Um, and uh, when my brother and sister uh, told me that they were putting together a soiree for them, I said, "Well, you know, I'll uh, jump jump on a plane and I'll be the surprise guest, and uh, and then I'll go to do the podcast." So um, I decided that uh, it was time for me to try the train again because um, you had forgotten. <laughs> well, I, I had forgotten years, I think about 30 years ago, um, and all my uh, my close buddies refer to it. I, I don't want to use the gentleman's name because this will be in the public. Um, I know where you're going. Yeah, I know we, the story. We refer to it as the trip of mm -hmm, cock. <laughs> 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 because uh, years ago, we decided we were going to go to Toronto for some kind of radio event. And uh, I didn't really want to go to the, um, I didn't want to go by train. Yeah. Uh, I w either wanted to drive, we were driving some nice cars in those days, or I wanted to go by plane. Anyway, the guys uh, convinced me that that's, that's the way we should go. We'll go business class. It'll be great. You'll see. V01. Yeah. And um, all I remember, well, there are two things I remember about, three things I remember about the trip. Um, there was like a, a, a track runner controlling the bar cart. So when you wanted a drink, <laughs> it, the, the way you got his attention was, running up. And he was down. moving quite quickly, was moving he? Moving quickly, not keen to service alcohol, no, I guess. Eh? Um, the second thing was when you travel, I don't know if it's still the same way because of COVID there was, there was no via one, uh, yesterday. Um, when you travel in, uh, via one in those days, you were the first car behind the engine. And I, I didn't pay no, never mind to that. And I think after like the seventh or eighth train crossing, 
I said to my buddy, <laughs> is he going to blow the horn <laughs> at every single train crossing? <laughs> 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 And you're sitting right behind it. And we weren't even in hour one. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, this is not very relaxing. And pardon me, I managed to get a, uh, a drink or two, na- two in me, and I had to use the washroom. And if you know the washrooms on uh, Via Rail, uh, they're a big metal sliding door. It slides from left to right or right to left. And it's kind of heavy, and it's a handle that you click and you pull, and you open the door, and in my case, I clicked the handle, and I pulled the door, and this gentleman, who was a member of parliament, turned around and said, close the door, (laughs) while displaying his member to me, and I quickly said, I'm very sorry, and closed the door, and to this day, it's known as Ed Smith's yeah you know, cock right yeah so <laughs> is that an anteater or a German helmet Ed <laughs> <laughs> that uh, to this day is uh, the reason it kept me off the train and, and yesterday uh, I went and I'm I'm happy to report it's a very efficient way to get from Ottawa mm-hmm. it wasn't long before we were here um, and it uh, it probably wouldn't be my first choice it's uh, it's an interesting way to travel well they made it difficult for you when you arrived at the <laughs> Doraval train station. Well, yeah, because today we're all wrapped in bubble wrap. Yeah. You know, years ago, when you got off at Dorval, you could wait until the track was clear and cross the track and go into the train station. No, 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 no. There'll be none of that because people are too stupid to look both ways yeah. when they cross anything. They've now they've, they've closed it off. So what they have is a nice set of stairs down and then a tunnel under the tracks and then another nice set of stairs up. And all the while, with the uh, minus 30 temperature and the wind howling through the tunnel, as you drag a very heavy suitcase up the stairs, eh, I can think of a better way to spend the... <laughs> well, while I was waiting for you, I got to do my Boy Scout good deed for yeah. the day because there was a woman coming up that stairway oh, God love you, Ted. with a suitcase that was bigger than she was. Yeah. And boy, was she struggling. Yeah. So I went down the stairs and I said, let me get that for God, you. So you. thank you very much, and I brought it up. Well, you know what? It, it, it's, it's not that, you know, I mean, I know I sound like I'm, I'm uh, complaining, and I guess I am, and it sounds like I'm spoiled, and I know I am, but one of the things about travel today is years ago, there would have been people to help. Yeah. There would have been people pointing. Yeah. There would have been people. Porters. There would have been porters to help yeah. you with your bags, or wait, but you literally are on your own. Yeah. And, and good luck to you. Yeah, and good luck to you. And I, like when I got on the train, they said they were there's no business class car because of COVID. But when you get there, I said, where do we sit? Uh, anywhere. No assigned seating. No, no assigned seating. Every man for himself. First come, first serve. Get on the train and uh, good luck to you. So, so it's... Doesn't make any sense. Didn't no, it make doesn't. any sense to me. So not not my. Uh, and it's a shame because choice. it can be. Yeah. It can be a very pleasurable mode of travel yeah. when it's done right. I love trains. I took the. Uh, I took the. Uh, I think it's called the Canadian oh, from cool. Toronto to Vancouver one time oh. many years ago. It was thirty yeah. years ago. It was nineteen ninety two. Yeah. First class, and had a sleeping berth. Yeah. And access to the lounge car and the dining car and all yeah. the rest of it. It took three days. Yeah. But I wasn't in a hurry. Nope. And uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Great way to see the country. Yeah, an absolute but, pleasure. But I would not want to do that in economy, no. sitting in the same seat and, and not having access to all those first-class and amenities. And also, tra- travel like everything else in that era, um, that was that was an era before it, all companies slashed and burned everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It was before companies had one guy doing four jobs. Back then... Four people did four jobs, yeah. so it was more efficient. And, and as you point out, 
you didn't have to rely on the kindness of strangers to help you with no with and they took luggage. they took pride in the product and yep. in the experience whereas now they take pride in the share price yes exactly. look at that share price yeah, yeah. what a share price that is <laughs> which is great if you own yeah. the stock yeah I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um and uh, did we cover all of the bits from yesterday i think we did we were writing down notes and Oh, yeah, I think most of them, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Because I'm, I'm very excited about our guest. We have another guest on the episode. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. But we also want to welcome a new sponsor. We're absolutely thrilled about having them aboard. The UPS Store Canada, a longtime friend of ours, David Drucker, uh, uh, has uh, been a longtime fan of the program. Uh, he's also done a lot of fundraising in the community over the years and him and I were talking the other day, and he said, I'd love to be part of it. I'd love to be part of it. It's the upsstore.ca. When we were moving out to British Columbia, Jess and I had some things that we needed taken care of, and the moving truck had already come. We didn't know what we were going to do, and she said, take it to the UPS store, and that's exactly what I did. And what's interesting about the UPS store to me is that it can handle – all things personal and all things business. And at a time when so many people are working from home, uh, a facility like the UPS store can be very handy yeah, in it, terms of equipping you equipping you for your home office or for uh, certain services that you need that you might not able to be otherwise, uh, might not otherwise be able to access. Thank you, Ted. If you run a small business, you probably probably already know about them. <laughs> How are we doing? God, geez. Did we pass the audition? No, if it's true. If you have a small business, you probably already know about the UPS store uh, in your neighborhood and all owned by people in the community, and they take care of it all from the boxes to the packing to the shipping. It's really uh, a great way to solve your problems. The upsstore.ca. Time to welcome our guests. Yeah, that means you're going to have to get out of the road. Okay, yeah. come on in here, Guido. This is not this is not your first rodeo in this oh, studio. I do this. It's 1996. Yeah, but you've been. This is is this where you guys do the intellectuals? Absolutely, this is yes. where we. That's where I sit. Oh, right? really? Hey, right you're in, you're in Guido's I, chair. I'm in Guido's chair. I'm sorry, Guido. <laughs> I, I'm deaf. I have to wear hair. No worries. That's Everyone right. looks good. You look they, great. Yeah, I like you the too. Black T-shirt. Well, it's very slimming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do the. Um, the uh, black and white uh, on Broadway actor headshot. <laughs> <laughs> like this? Yeah, yeah. No. Guido, I'm so glad to see you. Wow. First and foremost, I have to ask about your mom and dad. They're great. They're doing great. And uh, your mom and dad, 65 years of 65, marriage. 65 years of marriage. How about that, eh? And you're two years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> com coming up on two years <laughs> in March. Yeah. So wow. you'll be 120 <laughs> <laughs> something. Not the same milestone. Yeah, no, it's... When was the last time we saw each other, Terry? Well, we, uh, um, I, you know what? I don't know. It was pre-COVID. I okay, know. I'll I know that. I'll tell you exactly when we saw each other. Okay. Because since then, my life changed. Okay. Um, the week of the uh, uh, March second week of March twenty twenty. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was uh, when the last that's time. When I all saw our you. lives changed. Because because yeah. I was uh, I came back from New York to uh, do a show in Montreal. And uh, I asked Ter Terry if I could come plug the show on the on his show uh, on Shome, and um, I came in there. And uh, you said the show ha would would be one week from then. You said you couldn't make it because you had to go get married. Yes. And uh, interestingly enough, do you know who I came into your studio with that morning? Who? A gentleman by the name of Pantelis. Uh. Was Pantelis in that morning? Son of a bitch! Oh, I hey guess. Esteban. Jeez, uh, oh. uh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, isn't that I, amazing I how no the world idea. goes around? That's isn't so, that funny? Yeah, and uh, that show never happened, and I never yeah. went back to New York because that's where the hub of the yeah. whole. Well, my coronavirus. wife, my wife and I like to say we got married on COVID Eve. Yeah, because we were married on Thursday the twelfth. Yeah, and Friday the thirteenth, everything began to shut down. Yeah, and on the fourteenth, we had to get our ass out of uh, British Columbia and back home. I remember calling 200 people individually, telling them that uh, we're going to postpone the show to two weeks yeah, from yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, we, we all thought it was going to be Yeah, yeah well, sure. Yeah, yeah. The show's postponed for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Uh, two, two weeks to flatten the curve, right? <laughs> flatten the curve. Yeah, flatten so, the curve. Christ. Since, I'll flatten your curve. <laughs> so I had the, um, 
um, misfortune of being part of two industries that were most affected by Yeah, you. seriously. Yeah. Eh? I own a restaurant and do stand-up Live comedy. entertainment. Jesus, man. So uh, I had fun. Uh, yeah, dur- you can ask our friend Poseidon. He was uh, around during that time. Yep. Uh, thankfully, the only creative outlet I had was weekly recording an episode of The Intellectuals, where I uh, slowly, slowly fell apart. Uh, no kidding. Really? Uh, uh, I ended up at the... This is all documented on Jesus, the show. Jesus, now I'm I, laughing. And he's I ended, up, I ended up... No, no, no. I ended up at the psych ward of the Jewish General Hospital You're against kidding. my will for 21 days twice. Wow. Christ. Yeah, was that fun. Wow, good yeah. times. Isn't that great? And um, uh, so I was living in Cuckoo's <laughs> Nest. Uh, wow. In the morning, you wake yep. up and you... Do, 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 do. They give you the pills, you know? Yep. It was there's some free it's freeing though there's some there's some freedom in that because you're out of your mind so you can walk around in a circle or just scream or do whatever you want and no one cares so, so listen without being too personal yeah. and obviously oh, no, no, you're no, no, you're I'm willing open. to talk about it obviously yeah. what was me. the diagnosis okay so they believed uh, it was a, a it was triggered because of the anxiety yeah uh, probably borderline personality disorder. Oh, March 2020, after four years of complete sobriety, I decided to start drinking. Oh, no. That was so much fun, yeah. 25 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's why I brought it up. I'm, I'm sober again now. Oh, we're good man, on, good man. on, uh, what, six weeks? But uh, All right, well, uh, you know how it works, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why it's, I, got, I even got my own. Anyway, so... Um, now I'm I'm in the the the, the psych ward and and there's there's nobody funnier than paranoid schizophrenics. They're the okay. funniest people in the world. If people just talk, you have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy the humanity and and how similar we all are, even though we're crazy. I loved it so much. I went back in June for another three weeks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> kind of like going, uh, kind of going like club med. <laughs> no, well, I think the, the G- Jewish general is kind of like the club med yeah. of psych wars, no, is I, it not? I remember showing up here in my uh, scrub, in yeah. my my, uh, just to you know the erase the stigma. Bell, let's bell, let's. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I talked about it, and sure enough, people showed up at the restaurant to say hello to me because they listened to the podcast. Oh, cool! And they said. I walked, one guy said, I walked from Cremazy all the way to Prevo Hospital to check myself in because of you. Good I was going to say, how many people came in and said, you know what, you're not the only one, yeah. man, me no, too. No, but I also, I talk, I, I talk like the way I talk. I, 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 it's my real feeling, so I don't try to hide it, and I, you know, if I, if I can help. Thank God I feel better now. What happened was I was with a shrink who gave, who may have missed, <sighs> the, what they want to do is get you level enough to be back on the street. Because my family was concerned with me. I wasn't hitting anybody, but I wasn't doing very well. I wasn't well. I was crying, screaming, uh, getting upset, renovating the restaurant, not opening, blah, blah, blah. Things went to hell. Didn't go back to New York. Uh, uh, impulsive behavior. Um, and uh, they had me on lithium. Ugh. That's the shit that's in your phone battery. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, and I've heard so, of that being used to so treat... So here, I understand some people... Uh, that use it, but what it did was it got rid of my anger, but it also got rid of my joy. I was a walking zombie. <laughs> it was terrible. So then I, I've been uh, talking to a nice doctor named Dr. Weisborg since then, and she decided, I don't think you're bipolar. I said, great. Uh, and uh, we got rid of everything, and I'm just on a regular Prozac right now, like I was on 20 years ago, and I feel normal on myself. So is wow. everything is back to everything's back to are you are you performing while you're well, I have I um I uh, got together with a guy uh, named Enrico Ranella. He's a uh, uh, an Italian from Napoli and Paris. He's one of those comedians <laughs> that he has that Tony Robbins microphone. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that Madonna Vogue yeah. microphone. He does, he he has like a spray on tan. His hair is all perfect. He sings. He acts. He dances. He does everything except be funny. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and now this guy, I told him. I, I had a fundraiser in Toronto a couple of months ago that was postponed for two years. So I saw him there. He goes, what are you doing now? What do you want to do something? I said, I'll tell you what. Let's split it. Let's go on tour. You organize everything. Tell me where I got to be. <laughs> and that's it. So he's, and I got a tour coming up because I've been trying to keep this. This restaurant is the Bee Gees right now oh, because I've God. been ca- trying to stay in alive, yeah. stay in alive. 
Listen, uh, that's all I do. Could you do uh, do it for me one more time? Because your your Parisian accent and your Napoli accent, <laughs> which was one did perfect I together. You did, the, you yeah. did them both. Yeah. Yeah. It was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Yes. It's like uh, I do say. Uh, <laughs> It's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, every every time I we the, we have a signature phrase in our family because when you go to Italy you, you can't be in Italy more than a week before you hear somebody say to you, um, there is a, a slight problem. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, they start every sentence with yeah. three E's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's different from our Montreal Italian. That's accent, true. As you know, uh, yeah, that's my true. bro, me, you, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, my me, get I, out of here, yeah. you. Somebody in BC, we were somewhere. My please. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my. Me, I. Yeah, that's me, it. I. Me, yeah. I. I me, my I. wife and I heard somebody was talking to us and said, uh, we asked a question, and that the person said, "Me, I." Uh, and I said, "You're from Montreal." Yeah. <laughs> from Montreal. Course, now, does that course. come from Waje? It comes from French for yeah. sure, yeah. because yeah, yeah. we and start sentences in French with "me toi" yeah. or "me toi." Yeah. You know, yeah. I, it comes from. And the way that Montrealers will end a sentence in "fuck," what happened to the Habs? Fuck. <laughs> does that does that also come from French? It must be. Pass avec les Canadiens. Correct. It's got to be. That's got to be where it comes from. Yeah. And listen. The, I, That's so funny. I we should explain that uh, Guido and I first met at his restaurant, which is a restaurant called Sapori di Napoli, yeah. which I think is one of the best restaurants in the eastern part of the country. It's like grandma's for house. For sure. It is. It's like going to Nona's. And there was, I, I was there all the time. My parents <laughs> absolutely loved it. Because his uh, uncle lives not too far, which yeah, by the my way. My godfather. My yeah. godfather's, which my godmother refused to go to a restaurant. Because she, like all Italian women, she's, what, yeah, do, I, yeah. what do I want to go to yeah, a restaurant? Yeah, because yeah, my yeah. mother won't like the cream. Right. So if they see my mother eating there, yeah. means they can eat there. So my godfather was there all the time, I found out. Yeah, yeah. First, Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy first, yeah. first started to go there. And the the food is a lot like what my grandmother used right, to make. Right, right. Now we're... And, um, and still is. Am I right? Because I haven't been in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I was closed for a year, but reopened and everything's exactly like before. My parents are in there yelling at everybody. <laughs> Um, it's, um, uh, oh, my train of thought is gone. That's all right. Another one. Let me tell you a story while you regain your train of thought. My first wife was Italian from St. Michelle. Yes. Yes. I remember you mentioning it on another episode. And her parents, um, her father has passed lovely people, generous people, everything for the family and the food you can imagine, you know. Yeah. So I wanted to do something for them, and I insisted I'm going to take you out for dinner. And I took them to Da Vinci on mm. Bishop Street. Oh, that's a great restaurant. It but is. they were horrified. <laughs> Why? Because it costs so much. Oh, yeah. Because like, it's- Ted, yeah. <laughs> why would you spend all that yeah. money? I can make you this yeah, for they, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like 15 times yeah. I can make you this yeah, for yeah. nothing. Yeah. They just, like, it, it just, it made no sense to, and they were very gracious. It was yeah. filled with Montreal Canadians, that restaurant. Yeah. yeah they were was, very, yeah. very gracious about but it, but they were just horrified there's, there's, that I was spending all that so money funny. on one meal. For a guy like me, you know, certainly before I was married, you and you know, my parents were living outside the city. There was you know, not a lot of family in the city. It, it was the place where I went to get my Nona yeah, fix. Yeah, he, and, uh, and I think a lot of people do. One uh, one night, it was you. You can't plan this. It just happened. Uh, we're in a neighborhood called a Hunsic Cartierville. That's where we are right now. It used to be called New Bordeaux. <clears throat> um, one of the oldest neighborhoods. There's the old Montreal. You know that uh, Hudson fur trade and the beaver stuff? Yeah, and yeah, yeah Jacques yeah, Cartier yeah. stuff? Yeah. That all happened on Guay over there. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, one night, Terry comes into the restaurant with Mitsumi Takahashi, Ted Bird. Uh, Ted Bird, sorry, that's you. That's you. Uh, yeah. Aaron Rand <laughs> uh, and uh, Bill, Bill Brownstein. Brownstein. Yeah. And uh, their uh, significant others. And at the same time, it was a busy Saturday night, they were eating. Melanie Jolie, our Canadian heritage minister, had just been sworn in. And she, from the airport, came in with her suitcase to grab a bite. And they 
It's, everyone said hello to each other. You yes. guys all said hello to each other. And that Monday, and to this day, every time Melanie Jolie is on the radio with Aaron or with you or something like that, say, when was the last time we saw each other? Oh, it's Sapori tonight. <laughs> yeah, nice. I got a great, great plug. Great plug. <laughs> every single time. Yeah. Now, tell me nothing has changed. Well, the, nothing has changed. A week ago. You haven't changed the meatballs. You haven't nope. changed the pizza. You... Oh, uh, I moved the bar. Remember the bar was in yeah. the corner? Yes. And, uh, and uh, it's now where the family table used to okay, be. Okay, that's a good call. Yeah, because all the service happened. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, that the 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 last week, last week, no joke. Somebody came into the restaurant and said, "I heard you on Shom." That's a week. Like she remembered the restaurant from listening to you say my restaurant's no. name at eight oh five in the morning. No kidding. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Wow. Months ago. Yeah, well, Mon- well, years ago. Yeah, it's got to be I've, years I've been, ago. Yeah. I've been it's, gone it's so for funny. over a year now. Well, it's almost almost a year. year almost yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. what I was going to say. It's the type of restaurant that kind of looks like where Michael shot Virgil the Turk Salazar. <laughs> It's that kind of restaurant. It is. It, and, is that a Sopranos reference? It, no, that's Godfather. the Godfather. Oh, the Godfather. Yeah. Okay, it, but it, the Sopranos have been to the restaurant. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 the kind of restaurant actually you see in Italy a lot. It's a row of residential houses, and then a market, and then a few more residential houses, and then the restaurants right at the end of the street. Okay, you know how a lot of people in Saint Leonard or Italians here grew up in the basement of triplexes. Yeah, yeah. A triplex is something that I think only exists here. I mean, they exist elsewhere, but not in the style. No. So it's in a basement. So it it's rem- a lot of people. It's reminiscent of the same living rooms that used to eat in. The I restaurant think. is in a basement. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a place in Shadigay like that yeah. too. The Mercury. Yeah. It's kind of like what is it? Mamesos goes down the stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like There's that. another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like that's, Gentile over here. Yeah. That's authentic. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Big it's time. That is big time. So you can hide, you know, like. <laughs> You know how halfway up the, uh, you can't see halfway out the window. It's blocked. So it's yep. perfect for the Charbonneau Commission and these types of people. That <laughs> I had the Charbonneau Commission in my restaurant watching themselves on television. Okay, uh, so now. I owe money to the mafia. <laughs> explain to me how you, you go from, uh, right, how, how is it that you, your father decides to buy this plumbing shop. You decide yeah. to get into the restaurant. Okay, I was, I was, um, and, and the next, and the next thing I know, you're a stand-up comedian. Yeah, what, what, what happens there? I don't know. I listen to too many people. <laughs> I was in L.A. Deli- I, okay, because you went to Los Angeles. To I be went in to L.A. Because I remember last time you mentioned Guido was in L.A. That's Guido Cocomelo. Yes, he's my yeah. buddy too. We yeah. were roommates. Oh, yeah? Remember in we, L.A.? In, we went to the same theater school in New York okay. where we were two Guidos. You know how usually, like, there's Danny A, yeah, yeah, Danny yeah, B? Yeah, yeah, Never is there two Guidos. Uh, yeah, he's in L.A. He's doing great now. So I, I was in L.A. delivering pizzas for Joe's Pizza of Bleecker Street. Bleecker Street in New York, where Spider-Man works in part two, that pizzeria. He went to L.A. and opened up, and he only knew me because I used to work across the street. I don't know, cafe. And uh, he's like, you want to work? I said, sure. And I learned how to make that New York pizza. And I was delivering pizzas to Lindsay Lohan and Jimmy Kimmel and DiCaprio. Oh, wow. And uh, then my dad's like, you're deliver- just come and do it here. You've been gone for so long. And I said, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Let's do it. So I... Um, so you end up... You I, end up I, I end up doing that. And uh, just like uh, Italian parents, they take over and do it all themselves. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> While I'm, I'm watching this, uh, things are absurd, and I, I keep doing stand-up comedy, and it gets better and better and better, and I actually test out my jokes on a lot of the Italian people in the restaurant. Um, very much like Rocky Balboa, it, when he owns the restaurant, he tells <laughs> stories. So that's where a lot of my material comes from. That's how I, you know, and you need money. Money, 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 money. So now are you still doing stand-up? Yeah, yes. yeah, I'm still doing stand-up. Okay. I have a tour. It's called... Um, what the heck's it called? <laughs> a born, uh, made in, Wait. born in Canada, made in Napoli or something like okay. that. It's me and a guy named Enrico Ranella. We're at the Rialto here on April 23rd. And is it all in Italian? No, no. This one's going to have a lot of English. Okay. I have, I have uh, some shows I have uh, uh, with uh, some New York uh, broads, some New York broads. Is Eric Ennis Tracy and <coughs> Maya DiGiorgio. Maya DiGiorgio is the only Italian comedian to ever get a standing ovation at uh, the Apollo in Harlem. Wow. Is, is it trickier in Italian? No. I'll no. tell you why. It's my first language. It's what I'm most comfortable speaking. And in comedy comes truth. 
So it's very difficult if I have to refer to my mother and tell a story about something my mother did and not speak like her. Okay. It's very hard for me to say my mother talk like yeah, these because yeah. she doesn't. So that's where, that's my best answer. I because the authenticity yeah. comes from, you know, when they say you got to find your voice. Yes. Yeah. Pat Oswald said he was so happy that he got famous uh, now, like years later, because had he gotten uh, famous two years into his stand up, he wouldn't have been himself. He molded and he became himself. Right. You got uh, like everybody. You you have to go on the journey. Yeah. You know what I, what I love about your mother <laughs> is your, <clears throat> your mother because she was so fond of my godfather uh, yeah, yeah, the late Jim. the late Jimmy Damati. Uh, when she speaks to me she puts her hand on my arm and uh-huh. she speaks in Italian <laughs> slowly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you'll understand. So you <laughs> understand. And I don't have the heart to say That's it. funny. She, she, no does, she did that to um, Steve Sharippa. From the, from the Sopranos, Bobby Bacala. Yeah. Yeah. He produced a movie called Nicky Deuce here. It was like a kid Sopranos that I had a little role in, like uh, Marvin, Harry, and Home Alone. Me and a <laughs> big guy. We we're the two idiots. Sorry, boys. <laughs> and uh, uh, my mother goes up to Steve Sharippa. Tu deve ayudar a Guido. Guido deve andar da. He's like, I don't speak Italian, man. <laughs> you guys, she's trying to tell him, put help him with his career. He's like, I produced the movie. What else do I want? <laughs> what more does he want? Bro, your meatballs are good, bro. <laughs> Um, you got to tell me a Marty Scorsese story. Oh yeah, there was Martin I, Scorsese. You have to tell me the because the last time I saw you, you said I'm I'm living in New York. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like I got a walk on part. Okay. In the Irishman, and do, anyway. Okay. You do you tell remember the story. story? Do you remember this? How um, in the new Star Wars movies, there'll be like a secret celebrity yeah. cameo yeah. as a uh, stormtrooper. Yes. It's like it, that's Daniel Craig. So. I said, when is an opportunity going to happen like this again? I, I, I'm part of a list, you know, uh, in New York called Central Casting, where you just call up and you give them, and they call you, and they book you on set for extra work. Now, I'm part of SAG and Actra and all that stuff. So I'm on set for, you know, 8, 9, 10, 16 hours. After 10 hours, it's double overtime, triple overtime. So why not do this for 200 bucks? Just sit around in extras holding, listening to people tell stories. So now the opportunity comes up to be an extra in... Uh, Creed 2 with uh, Sylvester Stallone as Rocky. So wait a second. I got to sit ringside. I'm seeing Dolph Lundgren, Brigitte Nielsen, Felicia Rashad, and I'm seeing Erwin Winkler and Sylvester Stallone be Rocky in front of me. No problem. I'll do that. Why the hell not? You would do it. Of You're course. Fine. So uh, I, I'm watch, I watched the whole fight choreography. It was great. And, and Stallone is not uh, that much, you know, he's your height. A little taller than me. Um, and uh, same thing with the Irishman. So I get an opportunity to go eat spaghetti and meatballs in the background. <laughs> Why the hell not? I'm in no. First of all, Netflix threw a bunch of money, so the, the 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 vibe on set was not tense. Nobody's yelling. Everyone's taken 16 hours and they don't care because they just got all this money and it's a Scorsese movie. And it's the detail. This is a studio in Brooklyn. This is a studio like Mel's here. But the detail of this restaurant called Roma, which is in the movie. They even had the cigarette, the smoke lines going into the vents in the restaurant. Like, that's how detailed and authentic this, uh, this was. So I'm, here I am, you know, Harvey Keitel, Ray Romano. I got Joe Pesci, who, by the way, was the, what do you call it, the joker of the deck. Because you could see De Niro of, uh, being an extra. You could see these guys. You'll never see Joe Pesci. He retired. So I'm watching Joe Pesci, and I can't believe I'm looking at my cousin Vinny, and here's Home Alone right here. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. He's smoking Marlboro 100. <coughs> <laughs> and a lot of lines, really old, really old. And uh, so I'm, I'm, this is one of those crossroads in life that you have to, I'll never forget. Next table is, uh, it's me and a young lady, uh, you know, pantomiming. And at the next table is De Niro wearing uh, Gene Simmons shoes because he's got to be tall in the movie and uh, Scorsese and Joe Pesci and Scorsese is explaining to them the scene and uh, first of all by the way you want to talk about a real Brooklyn Goomba Italian guy in the background telling his friends no the best pastry shop is in Brooklyn go to Brooklyn there the pastry shop bro 
What more do you want? <laughs> Scorsese is talking to De Niro and, and Joe Pesci right over there. And you got to tell me that you know who has the best fucking cannoli in Brooklyn? What the fuck more do you want? <laughs> These mooks, you know? So uh, now uh, uh, Scorsese is, uh, is trying to figure out how to say something in Italian. Can you hear what he's saying? He wants to say... Um, Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Now, they're trying to figure out how to say something in 1950s Italian. I held it in like an ass. I wanted to say, excuse me, because you're an extra. You're not supposed to talk to them. Yeah. I speak 1950s Italian, but I didn't. I held it in, Shit. and I regret it my whole life. It really? Yeah. But is that a rule on set? And, uh, yeah, you know, an extra does not, not talk to, let alone Martin right, eh? Scorsese. Yeah. yeah, really. Now, and I, now, what do you think would have happened if you would have said? I think what would have happened was they would have graciously accepted my advice, and then you would have. And if they would have uh, given maybe a look to the first assistant director, he would have uh, asked the third assistant director to wrap me. Yeah. However. If there was continuity and I was already established, too bad. They right. need me because right. they got them. I'm right. in the back. Right. But if they would see Scorsese say, oh, that's great. And then everything's fine. Cause so why do you regret it? If, that could, if, if, if it could have been a disaster for you, if it could have ended poorly for you, why do you say you regret you didn't say anything? I could have taken a shot because I would have charmed the hell out of them. Yeah. Because I, I, I've already worked with Scorsese. I was in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm called uh, Crazy Eyes Killer, where Larry David is in a Scorsese movie, and uh, they didn't want to disturb him to tell him his mother died. <laughs> you remember? Uh, and uh, so he was on the roof, and Scorsese was directing this, this uh, bit on, on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and that's in 2003. In 2016, Martin Scorsese was wearing the same belt buckle. Huh. <laughs> really? That's yeah. what I remember. Wow. He has an asthma tank, always. Oh, is that right? Can't, no cigarettes around him. So did you, were, were you on set for the completion of that whole scene? And, and can you... Oh my God, I think I must have made $700. I, so I, I was you there, were there like all day, all day, 16 hours. Now are you at that table for and a good one chunk day, of that day? Yeah, one day uh, Harvey Keitel wasn't feeling well. So we were there for nine hours and then we, we wrapped, did nothing. Wow. Um, I think... Um, I, yeah, I was. I, you have to pause, and I have to say, "That's me." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, same thing with Rocky. There, yeah. uh, it's all green, and they take away your phones. But the joy has got to be. Oh, it's so much fun! Like if if I'm a table away from one of the greatest directors in film history, yeah, with one of the greatest actors in film, yeah, history, absolutely, having a conversation. I mean that's got to be that's got to be yeah no I I, I I so I soaked it all in there was I was in the at the baptism too uh, Joe Pesci's kid got baptized with Catherine Narducci the uh, Adi Bucco's wife from uh, yeah um, it was it's it's great you see the little details like for example okay who's the who's the king of this castle here when De Niro walks on set everybody shuts up sixty people shut up. Not when Scorsese walks on set. So who's commanding the uh, the room there? I can tell you De Niro has two cell phones, an iPhone and a burner phone, and a flip, and he reads the New York Times. Did he also uh, get $700 that day that you <laughs> yeah. did that same? <laughs> you know, I, 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 yeah, I've been hearing about, um, I think he, he's been really, take, he, got, he got taken uh, big time in a divorce, right? So oh, he, really? Yeah. He, his, the wife he married the second time. He divorced her. The once. same woman he yeah. remarried. Grace wow. Hightower. And uh, let that be a lesson a, to all of us. There's a video uh, of him waiting for his driver outside the courthouse in Manhattan, and the driver's on the in the back of the building, and he's saying, "Why? Where are you? I can't find you." He's trying to hide his face. I don't know why I watch that crap. I um, speaking of driver. Um, this would be a good spot for us to tell people about our friends at Merson's. Terry. Merson Automotive That's on right. Saint Jacques and NDG, where Terry and I have been doing business for. Well, not just doing business. We've been friends with the Merson family yeah. for, it's got to be 25 years. Yeah, we're, uh, if we're it's on a the day. third generation of, yeah. of Merson. That's right, yeah. yeah. Tires are their specialty, but they also do uh, any and all kinds of mechanical work. And, and this is important in 2022, uh, their mechanics are fully trained and equipped in servicing electric vehicles. And it seems like uh, these electric vehicles might catch on, Ter. Yeah, I think they're going to be a thing, Ter. Yeah. 
<laughs> but whether you uh, whether you drive something electric or with an internal combustion engine, the Mersons will take good care of you, and uh, I will vouch for, and Terry will vouch oh, for boy. their <clears throat> honesty. I, they I, will not do anything to your car that does not need to be done. It's important to find a mechanic you can trust, and that's tough to do. And I and a doctor and a lawyer. And, and that a too, and yeah. Lawyer, and I've been, I've been trusting them for. More than 30 years now, and you can find them online at mersonauto.com. Do you think it, it, people shut up and, and the set goes quiet because De Niro is intimidating? Is, is he an intimidating Yeah, he man? probably gives off that reputation. Like, don't in talk the, to me? He probably must. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, how could, because if, if Scorsese is the Scorsese big boss. Scorsese seems like such a nice man. Yeah, so I think uh, from past experience, because, you know, they always call the same stuff the same crews yeah so probably from past experiences you know maybe de niro doesn't like when you talk in the background while he's trying to concentrate right what i saw him i saw him act wow and i it occurred to me this is de niro's secret he's an eye actor okay which means uh he every eye move where it glance uh, uh he, he won't film actors won't move their heads they won't do this. They, they'll they move their eyes like that. He's an eye actor. And when Scorsese says cut, De Niro goes, you know, like, really? like literally wow, meaning wow. he had control yeah. over his eyes right. during that scene. It's all about where he looks because it's tight on his face like this, the camera. And that's it. He's eye actor. So do you think that's innate or is that a skill that he has that's acquired he and has developed? That's a acquired and developed. Yeah. 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 Like and Jack is Nicholson, that something he would have learned or is that something he would have discovered on his own? I like, think he would have discovered that on his own because they're not teaching... They have them now, you know, like uh, acting for TV and film class with the <laughs> director from, yeah. you know, Guiding Light. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you, they have that all over the place. Over wow. In, uh, so I think it's with Ty, because he was a theater guy, right? They were all theater guys. So they would, in the theater, you have to do things yeah. big. big. To, so right. the yeah. back row, the back row at the Centaur can see you. Um, I've never worked at the Centaur or the Sadie Bronfman Center. I don't oh, know. Maybe your time will come. Yeah. I, I've I got another question for you that I've always been curious about because i got to be honest with you, and we'll talk about this later. One of the things about re uh, retirement is it can be... Re I thought you were going to say read something <laughs> else. No, 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 no. <laughs> about, about being retired is, you know, I don't fish, I don't do puzzles, I don't golf. So one of the things in Vancouver I'm looking to do, just for fun, because I've always wanted to be on a movie set... Not for a living, yeah. not for anything else. But I thought, I could be old man on bench. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. What I've always wanted to know, though, is when you see background performers, as they're called, Guido. Yeah. And you're, like, in a bar. Like, you're at a date in that restaurant. Yeah. You had a date with you. Now, are you doing this? Yeah. The pantomime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you're moving your lips, but you're not talking. Yeah. The, um, I remember Will Ferrell and Mo Molly Shannon. Uh, did a, had a sketch about extras in uh, on SNL, uh, and uh, there's the ones that want to get the attention of the director, so they <laughs> overact. So here's you know the all right cut now first uh, first positions extras are rolling extras rolling and action and they <laughs> <laughs> uh, they overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I think um, right, so what, what, what I would do. I think they they uh, a guy taught me once because there's like pro extras that do it for a living. They bring their lawn chair and they, um, I think you, you do the alphabet silently. That helps. Cause you can't just, you know, you yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. you gotta be saying something. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah. H, I, J, K. So yeah, you're, you're you pretending yeah. to talk. That does yeah. work. That's interesting. Yeah. Just say the yeah. alphabet quietly, the, huh. uh, uh, silently. Mouth it. Yeah. Mouth it. And huh. it, it works. Um, that yeah, you always have to remember your first <laughs> position, second <laughs> position. There's some extra work that I'm still fascinated. Like, why not? I, I, I ran away from uh, uh, giant sentinels uh, in back of Wolverine <laughs> watching Mark Camacho play Richard Nixon. Why there the hell not? Why not? Mark Camacho as Richard Nixon. Yeah, the, I can picture that. He was great. I can, he's a great actor, yeah, Mark. He's he such a nice guy, Richard too. Richard Nixon. Yeah, a Montreal perfect. actor, Mark yeah. Camacho. Wow. His son apparently is quite Jesse, successful. Jesse, yeah. Jesse, Jesse's very talented. Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark's talented. great. He's yeah. awesome. Uh, he yeah, was Richard I, Nixon, and there's Hugh Jackman. I was like, why not? I'm used to a kid sometimes. I, un I understand sometimes they, they say... Okay, put on this over overcoat and this Stetson. Carry this briefcase, and when the director tells you, just walk that way. Is that it? Yeah. 
Yeah, usually the person that will tell you, and Vancouver is a great place to do that. I'll set you up with some buddies of okay. mine. They'll put right. you in the right direction. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's the um, third assistant director yep. that's in charge of the extras. Yeah. So you watch him. You don't watch Scorsese. You right. watch that guy. And if this guy goes, right, gotcha. <laughs> it means walk towards him. <laughs> Because you got to swipe, just yeah, to, because yeah. the, the blurry stuff in the background, you got to swipe, can't, yeah. If you've done it a long time, it, uh, it's all the same. It really is. A lot of eating, a lot of craft services. Yeah, a lot of standing around. A lot of but standing, I, a lot I'm, of waiting. You know what? I said, I, I, when you're retired, I got nothing but time on my hands. I'll stand around all day. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, if it's you something, know, the, 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 inner, the inner child in you will, uh, okay. will, will be excited. Guido would probably get a charge out of that tweet I came across last right. night, Ter. Okay. Oh. Uh, a guy who, uh, a guy who's a writer for a show called The Great North, I think it's called mm-hmm. on uh, on. Uh, I believe it's on Fox. Anyway, yes. he writes uh, sides from my recent auditions. <laughs> Grubby man with mouthful of pie. <laughs> Kim ain't been here in three days. <laughs> Closed mouth bar patron <laughs> nods vigorously at Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> You can picture the guy doing it. (laughs) Disappointed government official, quietly. No, sorry. Diapered government (laughs) official, (laughs) quietly. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. That reminds me. Oh, man, I could go in so many directions with this. Uh, Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo uh, famously played uh, the Greek uh, uh, Hercules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that uh, Vancouver um, um, Xena the Warrior Princess yeah. universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the it's written in the directions. Hercules stands there disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> now, what does Kevin Sorbo do? It's you can see this on YouTube. He misread it, and no one cared. He just said this. Disappointed! <laughs> and they left it in! They left it in! It's so you can watch it! And the director didn't even care! He left it in! Disappointed! Who says that? Hell of a line reading! That's amazing. Uh, Jesus Murphy. Uh, the, <coughs> oh, yeah, that's I, great. I love that. I love uh, that. You, you, boy, you've had some unbelievable experiences. Um, I um um I th- I think we should do the tweets. Yes, let's do that, let's shall we? Yeah. Oh, before yeah. you go into the tweets, yes. Ivan Reitman passed away. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he, know, he did. The great last, Canadian last director night, Ivan uh, Reitman. Oh, I didn't know that. Last yeah, night, I was not yeah. aware. Yeah, he passed away at the age of seventy-five. We don't know from what. Is you know, of course, his son is it's unbelievably he inherited. Love that up his, in the air his, movie. Uh, his son made. His son inherited his father's talent, I think. I mean, Ivan Reitman uh, created Ghostbusters. Just that's yeah, enough yeah. right yeah. there. Who's the son, Ter? Uh Jason Reitman. Okay. Who made Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah. Oh, all right. Just, okay. yeah. Yeah. And, and Ivan Reitman came up with uh, all the, the SCTV crowd yeah. back in the late wow. 1970s. He was responsible for Meatballs, which yeah. kind of created the Canadian movie business yeah, yeah. and set Bill Murray's career. Is he a Cana- was he a Canadian? Toronto. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. His, his mother survived Auschwitz. Yeah. Wow, and uh, really a, an incredible story. The family is really. And what's really an sad is that story. he was slated to. He's in pre-production uh, to direct Triplets. Oh boy! Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger find out that they have a third brother, Tracy Morgan. <laughs> 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 That's got some yeah. potential. Yeah. That's sad. So the tweet sheet, Guido, yeah, tell, is something. I do the doing. tweet sheet on my uh, on my radio show every morning on Light One Zero Six Seven. I take three funny tweets. Love that. that I find and I read them on the air and I get the reaction of my co-host. <laughs> and usually it's good for a laugh. And I come across some that I obviously can't use on the radio okay. because they're too salty. So yeah. I bring them in here <laughs> to use on to use on Terry. And I think one I think two of these three might be salty and one isn't, but they're all they're all pretty funny. I think you'll enjoy them. Right. From at short sleeve suit. This truth serum is delicious, you <laughs> ugly piece of shit. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great! Oh shit! You know, I would have been tempted to read that one on the air. There's an art really, eh? to tweeting. Oh that. yeah, yeah. From at Jason last name. Imagine a caveman running on a treadmill, completely confused and crying hysterically. <laughs> Which is just a great visual. 
<laughs> like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, shit. That's hey. Okay. And from at Tweet Potato 314, I like this guy. Marco Polo comes in after 17 years, sits down, and starts taking off shoes. Babe, I'm back from Asia. <laughs> Mrs. Polo, did you get the salt? Marco Polo, fuck. <laughs> Putting shoes back on. Fuck me. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's funny. Oh, man. Got to go all the way back to Asia to get the fucking salt now. Which is yeah. why it's hey. called salary, salario, right? Really? Oh, really? That I did I not know. know. Salary, salary. Hey, this is another question I have for you, Guido, before we wrap. Uh, wrap? Well, we're not going to wrap right this second, but Ted and I were talking the other day about getting more emotional as we get older. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're Italian, so you no, probably right, yeah, we're always emotional. since you were four. No, I, 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 I get it. I get it. What do I, you, is, is it happened to you? Yeah, I'm... I'm 44 <laughs> and it's amazing how things uh you care about change over time yeah um i mean there's stuff that makes you cry i look i'm from a different generation you probably cry at what uh the natural or what's that movie brian's song yeah it's, it's i like, remember brian's yeah, yeah. song but i was too young to cry then okay. i'd probably it, cry if i watched I, it now I, I embarrassingly i cry every time mickey dies in rocky three yeah well <laughs> I mean. for me it wasn't just sports movies uh, now it's even commercials yeah. like you know television commercials call home where, yeah we were, when i was yeah. a when i was a kid i would go over to my grandfather's house and mow his lawn he'd give me five dollars and cry when i left yeah and you wondered why yeah yeah and yeah. now i know yeah well, oh, what, yeah, what was it I was telling you? Uh, oh, I was telling you the story of my mom and dad. 65 years of marriage, 86 years young in the living room, and my brother puts on the song, uh, the Nat King Cole song, their very first dance at their wedding in 1957. Yeah. And I'm telling Ted that story, and he says to me, that's a pretty good story. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, just, that's the same reason like my mother will cry every New Year's Eve. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Have you ever seen the YouTube video of the Italian fireman rescuing the kitten? Yes, I yes. watched it on, you showed it on your... Uh, yes. uh, we showed it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, you here. saw that, I did saw you? Yeah. yeah. I saw them all. Wasn't that fantastic? I love that. I love stuff Just like that. Just fantastic. I love yeah. that. And boy, oh boy, do the ladies like that yeah. video. Yeah. No kidding. They no love kidding. that guy. That guy's no getting laid from here 100%. to fucking Sicily. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 100%. Oh, man, there's a sketch I want to show you off air. Okay. An old SNL sketch that I loved. It's called uh, Italian Restaurant. It's when Kirstie Alley was hosting the show. So they walk, her and Kevin Nealon walk into an Italian restaurant, and right away you see the, the maitre d' comes on. Hello, welcome to Il Cantore. I'm an ala, bellissima. It's Dana Carvey. <laughs> and Dana Carvey now, bellissima. He kisses her on the cheek. Then Rob Schneider comes in, kisses her on the cheek. I then think I remember he this keeps one. kissing. It's basically the horniest bunch of men, <laughs> the waiters. It's part of their culture. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. pasto, please. It's so funny. Italian. Um, our guest is Guido Grasso, and one of our sponsors are our friends at Matla Bonheur. I've been speaking on their behalf for a long time now. They are a Quebec owned, family run company that I've. Uh, talked about this before for some reason or another they got very passionate about mattresses and a good night's sleep so they're involved in all the latest technology when it comes to mattresses they're really really passionate about changing the way you sleep so when you go into a mat lab on our store they may ask you a couple of oh interesting and you may consider personal questions do you sleep on your side do you sleep on your stomach that kind of thing but what they're trying to do is determine What's the right night sleep for you? How do they do have tear-resistant mattresses for when I cry myself to <laughs> they, sleep? They may have tear-resistant <laughs> pillows because there's a lot of new pillow technology. Oh, there you, go. you can ask about, Ted. So when they, when they greet you warmly, and they always do, because they're all about service, they say they like to be treated the way they would expect to be treated when they walk in a store. You'll notice it right away. There's 18 locations of Matla Bonheur around the greater Montreal area. You'll be warmly welcomed in every one of them. You'll find a mattress for your budget and for your particular needs if your family's growing if you're moving if it's time to change the mattress this is where you want to stop i know you can find mattresses in all kinds of other places but uh at the met lab owner store you won't have to uh, step around the washing machines and the uh, recliners it's all about mattresses pillows everything that has to do with a good night's sleep 18 locations around the greater Montreal area, matlabonner.ca. Guido? Oh, Terry. Yes. 
Um, I um, wanted to ask you about, uh, do you think stand-up is now going to unfold as we move towards the summer? Are there going to be more You mean live performances? Yeah, live performances. Because if exactly. you talk about stand-up, that's a whole other ball game too with the whole cancel culture, yes. right? And everyone's yeah, getting I, in trouble. Jesus and Murphy. Everybody's saying something that's something. And so everybody has something in the past. It's always going to come up. Um, I heard that... Um, we're, we're on our way to open up again, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want, I mean, there's just for laughs. Mike Ward has the Bell Center, man. Yeah. You know, so I hope it all, it, I got to perform, I, you know. Touch wood. I need money. <laughs> um, so I, 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 people are dying. You, I see people in the restaurant, they're dying to be with other people. Yes. People want to be in yes. a room with other people. Yeah. You have kids? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My first. Yeah? Yeah. I have a son, six months old. My God, I'm congratulations. That's right fantastic. Could you imagine? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, yeah. he's not affected. He's obviously only, not psychologically affected only by COVID. Only good thing that happened in my life in the last yeah. two years. Would you believe I met his mother the night he was conceived? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that's happened on more than one occasion. Yeah. Your that's mom, I used to be a Tinder champion. Your, your, mom, your mom and dad must oh, be. Oh, that's amazing. Their that's their amazing mind. news. That's yeah. amazing yeah. news. Yeah, that's this is fantastic. him with my niece. And what's his name? Johnny. Gianni. Gianni. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's very cute. I told him to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? You, was, what were you, you were showing... You were showing the photo of you and uh, and your kids uh, uh, in Italy at the yes, grave, at the at grave, my great uncle's grave site. Like, uh, look at how the kids know something important is here. They're 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 also and I'm uh, fat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Terry said, "How old were the boys?" And I said, "Well, Charlie was four. <laughs> Sam was six. And I was fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. Ups yeah. And downs. What are you gonna do, Guido? Thank you. Oh, it's so much fun, man. I want to keep talking. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you got another story you yeah. want to tell, it's uh, as Ted. Always tell us been. about. Tell us about the intellectuals. The show that you oh, do yeah. with, uh, yeah. with with Poseidon. You just yeah. Reminded yeah. me yeah. of the yo, joke. Yo. What? The joke translate. <laughs> this joke. This is joke funny. is funny. <laughs> going to. The- <laughs> uh, my good friend here, Poseidon, the magic producer, and yes. I. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Pantelis decided, uh, how can we put these two guys together? If there's anybody, the yin and the yang, how could it be possible that there's a guy that knows less than him? <laughs> and, and sometimes it's shocking. Because um, we kind of come from the same world, but genera- generationally different. Yeah. He grew up amongst the Greeks, Park Exer. Yeah. I grew up amongst the Italians, similar mentality, but, you know, 20 years previous. Right. So there's, sometimes there's references that I'm like, how do you not know who Fred Flintstone is? How is this possible? How? And, and, that's, and that's what we, and we have, um, every week we have a top five and a half list, kind of like a Letterman top ten. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it kind of is the, uh, the theme we do a little bit of show prep like that with some stuff we want to talk about. And the uh, the underlying theme of the top five is the rest of the show. And Don't soon uh, we'll be adding a little something uh, to the show that we spoke about that we both like the idea. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to add a little pizzazz, as they say. Nudity. Nice. <laughs> Don't you find, I, I've always found this, I, I always use this um, example. When I was a kid, when I was like 10, 11 years old, I knew who Glenn Miller was. My parents didn't listen to Glenn Miller. I didn't listen to Glenn Miller. But I knew who Glenn Miller was. I don't know why, but I knew he was a big band guy from the 1940s, 20 years before I was born. And as I got older, you know, I started to know things. And, you know, just just this past weekend, we at my house, one of my dad's friends was at the uh, gathering for my parents' anniversary. And Cam said, how do your kids know all the words to the Sinatra songs? And my dad said, well, they were raised around it. There's, uh, am I wrong or was there a curiosity back when we were yeah, kids no, I, I, that you wanted to know about I, things? Yeah, I did. I did. I have uh, cousins. All my cousins are your age. I, so I, I would go to my cousin's house next door and go through his record collection. So I know a lot of 70s rock, but even though you, I was born in the late. Curious of course. It. Because I want right? to be older. I want to be cool. I want to be like yeah. them. I want to know. I'm, I'm stunned by the fact well, that... Well, I think part of it is that we weren't like doing this all the time. Right. But in some ways, <laughs> right. in some ways, right. 
But it's all in there. If you, it's if all I know there, the, you I was, right. yeah. Find out if you, if you're listening there. and not watching, I was just staring blankly at yeah. my phone, and that's what kids Cause, do cause, a lot now. That's what I do. Never mind. Poseidon kids. is yeah. really, really fast at researching something. Yeah. yeah, he has that ability of like, what's the name of the, you know? Yeah, he's done that for us a lot. I see him do it on two drink minimum yeah. all the so, time. So yeah, yeah. he does that faster than I do. Yeah. But what he searches, that's up to him. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember a game you guys played once because my friend Patrick called uh, and he won. Uh, hi, I'd like to play cryptic band names. Cryptic band names. Do you remember that? I don't remember. And that. Yeah. He, he said. Yeah. He, uh, for he example, said, Super Tramp was Exemplary Hobo. Oh, yes. So Patrick yeah. calls in. Yeah. Uh, Hi, I want to play Cryptic Bang Games. And he says, that's a whole other game. <laughs> <laughs> the one that you came up with was Rosé Barber of Mayberry. Um, Rosé Pink Floyd. There you go. <laughs> This is what but would happen see, between 8 and 8.15 in yeah, the morning. Ted, and we got paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> Ted is such a great writer, so good with language and words, that a lot of and our... You must love George Carlin. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, I, that's what I... I got into radio because of George Carlin. Yeah, yeah because yeah. he is I, a wordsmith. He and used to do the uh, his wonderful wino radio bit. Wonderful wino, the big sound in the big town. I knew it word for yeah. word, and I would entertain my friends with it, and they would all say, you should become a radio announcer. Well, yeah, no, because yeah. he, he also uses the timbre pitch in his punchlines. His voice goes up, down. Yeah, 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 it's true, eh? He's yeah. great at but that. But that's where a lot of the games that we played over the 20-some-odd years we were together came from Ted's love of words and language and English you know, revisionist history was, I think, yeah. had a lot of that in so it. So funny. Um, just the way the, the 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 pace of it and the way it was written and and uh, even his news was... Yeah, I, I, lo I, I, I and, and always appreciated so little tidbits of, uh, yeah. oh, well, that's a great adjective. Yeah. I taught Poseidon the word dichotomy yesterday. Oh, oh yeah? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good word. Yeah, I Googled it, it, actually. Yeah, he Googled <laughs> it. <laughs> We know it's time to go. All right, we got to go. Thank I got to go. Very hey, it's yeah. Valentine's you Day. I got customers true, yeah. tonight. That's the biggest day of the year, isn't yeah. it? Well, no, Mother's Day. Everyone has oh. a mother. Not everybody has a lover. Okay, yeah. there you go. I thought it was Valentine's But you'll be busy tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even supposed to be open. It's Monday, but I'm, I'm opening. Listen, oh, good man. Yeah. Sapori di Napoli, let me tell you something. From my godfather, Uncle <laughs> Jimmy. Godfather. <laughs> it's big in my family. God, <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, God bless him. Ray, he rest in peace. What a beautiful to, man. To my, great. my mother and father, to everybody I've ever brought to that restaurant. Uh, meatballs like your grandmother makes, like my grandmother makes. Yeah. It's on Dudamain. And Google it. Yeah, Dudamain and Bordeaux in a Hunsic Card Civil. Sapori di Napoli means taste of Napoli. Uh, it's just like going to Naples for the night. And Yeah, uh, well, you leave your wallet there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And and uh, when maybe in March people can see you live. Yeah, uh, April 23rd at the Rialto or uh, at Guido Grasso Jr. on Instagram. The link tree is in the description. Okay, there you go. Our thanks to Poseidon. We'll see you next episode. Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval, where the luxury is unmistakably British, but nobody wears a top hat or a monocle.